Hello, this is Abhishek uh, and uh, this video is an explanatory video for uh, one of the projects uh, AppSync Rule API which you can see on, on my screen. Uh, so as you can see uh, the code uh, and the project is uh, there on GitHub and uh, this is how it looks. Uh, I have added all the information regarding the project and project structure and CACD etc in the readme file and I have just uh, cloned it on my local machine. Uh, and uh, here I'm going to explain the project structure, uh, what all resources are there, what all resources are needed for this uh, application and uh, the overall project structure for the same. Uh, so uh, let's uh, go to the serverless YAML uh, first. So this is the uh, core of the project where all the resources are being uh, defined and uh, as you can see uh, there is a service name, uh, all the provider details I've uh, mentioned here these are some of the environment variables which will be required throughout the project uh, then these are IAM statements uh, which are needed uh, for the DynamoDB access which is uh, going to be created as a part of this project so that we need those uh, there are some plugins I am using so split stacks to uh, uh, split the cloud formation stack uh, into multiple nested stack uh, although this project is very small but uh, I personally use this into my projects uh, so that um, it is a, a workaround for the cloud formation 200 resources limit. Uh, similarly, there is an AppSync plugin which is the uh, important thing in this project because uh, we are using this to define the AppSync uh, resources, mapping templates, etc. So yeah, so this is one of the plugins and .n plugin too, you know, um, this, is, this, will, this uh, can be used in the local testing as well uh, to mock the environment variables. Now uh, the next section is to, for functions. So uh, this project has four functions. Uh, first is to create a blog, then get a blog, update blog and delete blog uh, since this is a crude API. So these four lambdas uh, I've created uh, and these are the uh, configuration for the same. Uh, uh, almost same similar for all the four, four lambdas. Uh, and uh, I'm also using a package manager also uh, to bundle all the code. So uh, yeah. Uh, the custom section, uh, the split stacks plugin configuration uh, is mentioned here and the important part app sync. Uh, before talking about this app sync, let's uh, move further and see. So this is uh, uh, our DynamoDB table which is going to uh, create and uh, all the data related to the blogs uh, will be stored in this DynamoDB table. Now coming back to the app sync thing, uh, so uh, this is where in custom section in app sync this is where uh, you define the uh, app sync uh, related configuration like schema conf uh, schema configurations and resolver mapping template etc uh, but before that uh, um, i have used uh, an abstraction for the same and since you know this can be a bigger and this can uh, make your serverless yaml file very clumsy and large uh, that is why I've used this um, abstraction here and I've uh, put it uh, uh, into another folder and I just referred it here. So this uh, this is it, a uh, very small serverless uh, YAML file. Now uh, going to the serverless AppSync API. This is the same file which I referred into the AppSync in, into the custom section. Now uh, this is where I've defined um, uh, everything related to the our API. So there is a name, there is a schema. Uh, and now let's see the schema. So this is the schema, schema.api.graphql. So there is, this is just simple schema. Uh, it has one query to get a blog and three mutations to create, uh, create a blog, update blog and delete blog. So this is the get blog query to get um, a particular blog uh, given an ID. There, these are three mutations as I mentioned uh, are defined here. Then uh, the um, format of the input for each of the mutation is here. And this is one type blog. Uh, so this that's that simple uh, schema and uh, which I refer here uh, and the AppSync API plugin uh, which we uh, you know added into the plugin section of our serverless file uh, which uh, out of the box provides a lot of features uh, to you know uh, connect the schemas uh, mapping template etc uh, which is, which is a great thing now uh, there is an authentication type for the uh, API I've just used API key we can use Cognito user pool or IAM etc and uh, yeah and uh, this is where uh, you have to give the reference for your where your mapping templates lies 
so in my in my case uh, it's in the mapping templates folder which i have uh, added here in the left hand side where all of the um, resolvers and the stuff says uh, stays and i have referred those mapping templates here uh, then uh, here for for mapping templates we have to um, add configuration like data sources and all so that also i have referred from another file since this you know uh, for a for better readability and maintenance so now uh, to show you this file um, it's created in resources app sync resources and this mapping templates so there are four uh, four types i've uh, defined here uh, for each of the uh, operation like crude operation and the request and response mapping template i have uh, added like for example for create block which is a type of mutation the data source will be create block lambda function here in in this case and the request will go through this request.vtl and uh, the response will be through the mutation dot create block dot response vtl which stays in this as you can see this is the um, uh, vtl template uh, looks like for create block this is the response structure looks like for, for uh, create block thing now coming back here uh, similar for all four uh, operations get blog update blog delete blog and uh, the request and response mapping template locations for the same and name for, for the same then coming back to the file we have already defined the mapping templates uh, configuration there and the data sources which are being used here in the app thing mapping template yaml file create blog get blog update blog are defined here like data sources which are nothing but lambda four lambda functions so these are four lambda function configurations first is for create blog then for get blog update blog and delete blog and the um, im role statement for the same is mentioned in the app sync role file which is also can be found in the, inside the resources app sync resources and then app sync role yeah this is a simple um, permission and uh, yeah so this that's pretty much of the uh, configuration needed for this project now uh, coming to the lambda functions now uh, lambda all the four lambda functions stays inside this uh, lambda uh, folder where i created separate folders for uh, each lambda and there is a sim simple file the db helpers which is which are nothing but dynamo db helpers uh, like update item delete item get item and create item which uh, we can use inside our uh, lambdas now uh, coming to the create block for example uh, there is a index file uh, this is our lambda which uh, here we are creating an id for the blog and then these are the parents required for a dynamodb operation uh, and this where uh, we are invoking the create item function which is from this dynamodb helpers which is nothing but a dynamodb put operation so uh, yeah here it is being made and the try catch block is here and now similar for, for delete block uh, here nothing much uh, different from create block just defining parameters and invoking the delete item function which is this which is using dynamo db delete operation coming to the get block uh, here i am again defining parameters table name and key uh, because this operation will fetch our fetches this uh, blog id blog with this id and here i am invoking the get item function which is a dynamo db get operation and by the way uh, the document client is uh, configured here and uh, yes this is get blog and here if not found we are returning that error if found we are returning that if in in case of error we are returning the 500 response here for update blog uh, a slight difference uh, because because of the update item uh, function because the dynamodb update function receives parameter in specific format so that is why it is something like this update expression then attribute names return values and we are preparing it for here so uh, in this block details all of the updated items let's say in a single invocation we want to update a name of uh, the blog author of the blog then for each of them it will create update expression and it will take it here and it will invoke the update item function with those uh, particular update expression and values and it will return 200 and if in case of any error it will return 500 so that's pretty much of it uh, that these are the uh, four basic lambdas and uh, 
Yes, uh, so uh, in, in this project, uh, I am using the webpack uh, here to uh, to build and package our code and we are using ESLint also for better code practices and yes and the github workflow stays here in workflows so uh, there are two steps uh, one is format check and one is uh, actual deployment so uh, and also there are two stages this is a multi-stage project uh, as you can see uh, there is a dev uh, and prod environment so there are two branches also uh, one is dev uh, which is for develop a uh, development uh, developer and a production branch uh, to to deploy to production environment and uh, these are the jobs two jobs as i mentioned format check and serverless deploy so in format check uh, we are just uh, checking format using eslint and in the serverless deploy phase uh, yeah here there are some environments also which are added into the github secrets for so that we don't expose them uh, to outer world and uh, yeah so these are the steps for the deployment first we are uh, installing serverless then we are installing some dependencies then we are bundling the project using webpack and then if environment is dev then the region is i have set up as uh, mumbai region uh, so it will deploy the uh, secret uh, it will deploy the project to the and create resources into the mumbai region for dev and for main it will deploy into the oregon region which is prod prod environment. So that's pretty much of it. Now coming back to the testing. So uh, these are two. Uh, this is the Oregon region, which is prod. You can see that uh, all the resources created here. There is this DynamoDB table also created in Oregon region. Uh, when the deployment hits, and similar this cloud stack is for Mumbai region for development and. Uh, Let's try it out. Try the API. I'll try to use AppSync console itself. So I'm gonna try to create a blog. So we'll try to create a blog first. Okay. So title is URL is hash. author uh, these fields are coming from schema like whatever schema you will uh, define it will take all those inputs and the publication date i will add here publication date is a type of aws date so it takes date in specific format and i'm gonna hit this yeah as you can see we have 200 like create blog response it is created the blog with this id let's try to fetch it using get block query i'll pass that id here i'll run the query as you can see uh, we got the blog whatever we got created and you can also see that in the dynamodb also that our blog got created author is abhishek vag so let's try to change this name using update blog okay it got updated let's see yeah got updated and now i'll try to delete the same blog blog with id is deleted successfully let's see yeah it's deleted so yeah uh, that's about it uh, and yeah this is the workflow and as i explained the workflow is already um, already deploying um, to separate environments you can check the uh, pipelines into github also so yeah that's pretty much a pretty much of it from my side uh,
Thank you.